Hello everyone, today I am going to talk about race condition and uh, we will show you an, to how to exploit a, a race condition vulnerability. So basically before uh, proceeding, I would like to say some of the things that uh, the server on which I will be working on, which in which I will be showing that this tutorial is not owned, my, owned by me. It is uh, one of the challenge which was given by my professor. Oriel Fancilon in my system security class in Eurocom. So he gave some of the challenges. One of the challenges was race conditions. So I thought of like uh, showing this uh, vulnerability, like how to exploit the race condition to all of you. Furthermore, there is one more thing I want to say is uh, this uh, I won't be dealing with a lot of, I won't be dealing with a lot of uh, theoretical questions or something like because I really hate theories so I'll just try to stick with the practical part practical application and how I'm going to exploit this vulnerability so uh, but before uh, uh, we begin with the race condition so let's let us know that what this race condition is this condition is something in which we exploit the timing interval or the timing interval of the uh, code for example let's take uh, we have views of the code like if a equal to equal to one and then we are supposed to add a equal to a plus one and if we want to print So basically, what it, this piece of code does is, it will just check that if a is equal to a, a is equal to 1 or not, and once a condition is satisfied, so it will just directly add a, a equal to plus 1, and what you are supposed to get, is, the answer is, answer was supposed to get is a equal to 2. But what an attacker can do is, once... Uh, this condition is valid okay it will this after this condition is valid it takes a uh, computational time which is in a microseconds to work with this so once this condition is valid what an attacker will try to do is change the value of a to something like 3 or 4 and uh, and then you'll get an answer something like 5 or 6 whatever the attacker has changed the value but in this condition, so basically you are exploiting a microsecond of the time. So exactly uh, that is what we are going to do in this tutorial. So let's see the how the environment is set up for this one. So basically I got... Okay. Challenges. So here we can see that uh, one of the file is clear cache. Okay, the other file is scat. Then we have a file something called public, when private. Then, okay, this is some of the directories. Uh, let's see what can we. Uh, but furthermore, what we can see is uh, this ASCAT has a such ID function. So now, what such ID uh, gives you is uh, that it uh, it usually has uh, uh, administrator permission, but allows the other user to execute this program. So basically, we can use ASCAT, ASCAT, and try to read the other file. So. See if this works. Uh, 
so basically our now our aim is to make sure that uh, once the permission once this the permission is uh, checked by this ASCAT program after the permission is checked we are going to uh, change the link uh, uh, from public to private so for that first we have to create a mage the idea is that we are creating a big mage directory like a chain of directories in which like uh, the first time when the permission is checked uh, after, and uh, after the permission is valid it will take a lot of computational time to go into that particular file and then uh, open that file to view the, the all this content so this is where we will be checking once the once the access is granted okay like first it will call for the access then it says checks okay your uh, access is granted for this file okay you can open the file now before the access is granted and the file is open, we will change the link from public to private, so that the program gets uh, uh, so the program gets confused and instead of opening, since it checked the permission for public, so uh, but it will open eventually open the private file. So let's see how we can do it. Do this. For that, first we have I have created already created a mage file. Okay. This is this basically will create a mage of a, a chain of directories. Okay, already I have defined this depth chain. So we are not going to deal with a lot of this code. You can pause the video and see this code. Anyway, let's uh, go to the fun part. Okay, this clear cache. Okay. I just forgot to mention about one of this thing is this clear cache this clear cache is so some uh, when the first time you run the program uh, and even if it goes it searches for a depth uh, it goes through a depth of directories uh, the second time when you try to uh, view and go through that chain it will create a cache uh, cache in its temporary memory and it will uh, run the and show, show you the result directly from the cache memory so the time execution is less because in this type of attack we are trying to create uh, to, cre to increase the computational time so that an attacker as an attacker we get enough of time to change the link from public to private so uh, so we have like clear cache which will just go on uh, clearing the cache for the uh, uh, clearing cache so, th so that it actually goes traverses to all the file systems let's, uh, let's go okay okay so for those I have already written some, some of the commands and everything okay what we can do is okay meanwhile I already created a Python del file so that I can delete all of the mesh file which I'll be creating okay this is my mesh file and then I am creating a while loop infinite loop so for the clear cache okay so that it will just go on clearing the cache every time every, uh, every time the, uh, the program goes to traverses to the directory okay in the terminal 2 we will just uh, try to run the ASCAT program okay and in the terminal 3 this is the terminal where we are going to actually perform the attack like we'll just go to the particular directory and then we'll just change the link from uh, private uh, public to private so You can see this so in the first directory like we have already created a mage if you want to see you can it's going to take a lot of computational time so let it be 
because even creating those directories doesn't mean that all the directory has actually been created. So we have to wait for a few seconds so that all the directories, all the uh, chain directories you get created. Okay. Meanwhile, I pause the video for a second. I hope uh, the directory must have been created. So let's run this Haskell program. Let's see what it does. So now you can see that the first the program is calling for the access and it is taking a lot of computational time because it has to go through all of these directories, a chain of directories and then it will, uh, it will check for the permission and once the permission is granted so it will just uh, go and try to open the file. So you can see like the access is granted and then it will try to go and open up the file. So the basic idea was uh, why we use the clear cache was to uh, to clear the ca ca cache because once the permission is checked, once the permission is uh, checked, so it will just uh, once, oh sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, you can see like uh, permission is checked and the file was open so the idea of using clear cache was that it will clear the cache so that every time the file actually has to go uh, the program actually has to go to that particular file in order to in order to access the particular file um, sorry. So, uh, in the meanwhile now we are going to to that particular folder and we will be changing the link So now we will have to wait, we will have to wait for the exact time. So uh, the idea is that once there's uh, calling access, access uh, is called, once we are getting the access granted function, like uh, access granted, then we are going to perform our exploit before opening it. Okay. and wait that okay now you can see that we have bypassed this and congrats your access file and this we got that race conditions race condition. so this was all for the race condition for the theory part like how what is race condition i know you guys are very good at uh, using the google so you guys can go and uh, google out the theoretical part or else i'll be uploading those theoretical questions onto the my blog and furthermore if you have any comments uh, you can ask in the comment section if you really like this video give a thumbs up and do share and subscribe to my channel